Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Jonathan and welcome back to another Permaslug video. Today what I want to talk to you about is how to style gravity forms when you're working inside of the Oxygen Builder. For those of you guys not familiar with Oxygen, I'll give you a brief rundown. It's basically a visual site builder as you can see on the screen for WordPress that's really similar to Divi or Elementor. Uh, or Beaver Builder, any of those builders that you're familiar with, you'll have a rough understanding of what Oxygen can do, except that Oxygen allows you to build every element of your site. So there's nothing you can't do with Oxygen, whereas with any of those other builders, of course, you have probably some restrictions you've encountered. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with Gravity Forms. It's by far and away one of the biggest WordPress form builders out there, something I use in just about every project, um, and anything that has a more complex form than just a contact form, I go to Gravity Forms without fail every single time. I personally have have the highest tier, I think they call it enterprise or elite uh, plan, and you can view all that under the pricing tab. If you're not familiar with Gravity Forms or you haven't purchased a license, use the link in the description below to get some more information on that. Um, but what I want to do today is basically just show you what it looks like whenever you have set up a form inside of Gravity Forms on your site. And let's say you go ahead and paste in the short code on your actual, um, in your WordPress content here, and you have it show up on the front end of WordPress. Um, when you're using Oxygen, you might be disappointed to find that it's just blank styling. There's nothing really special about this. The form works totally fine just right out of the box, but obviously you'd never want to set a site live with a form that looks like this, especially if you build a website for clients. I would never want this to, to appear on the front end to anything uh, public. So basically there's two options for us here. We can do one of two things. You can either style it using CSS and Gravity Forms has a ton of really great documentation on their CSS ready classes, which allow you to create um, columns and, you know, multi-width um, appearance layouts that are built right into Gravity Forms so you don't have to mess with, you know, um, trying to write CSS for that. And they also give you all of the selectors that you could ever need to style the form exactly how you want to. So everything from, you know, the field labels, like if we go back to this here, you can style the, the font and the size and the color of that particular word and just this line here or every, um, you know, every field label or the little asterisk, you can change that. You can do pretty much everything you want and you can find all of the documentation here. To get to this, I normally just type in Google CSS Ready Classes Gravity Forms and I find this article. Or or the CSS selectors is the other one that I tend to find myself looking at quite frequently. Uh, but I've also compiled a bit of CSS for a form that's going to look really nice. Um, I, I kind of started off by Google searching material, material design, gravity form, something to that effect, and kind of modified this CSS to fit my use case. And what I do is basically just have this set up as a really basic um, kind of catch-all for all of my gravity forms. And whenever I have my staging site that I clone to start new projects for, I go ahead and have this CSS already inside my style sheet in Oxygen. If you're wondering what all these fancy words and lingo are, really it's not that complicated. If you want a form that just looks great and doesn't look plain Jane like this, all you gotta do is take the CSS, which you can get to in the link in the description below, and I'll show you how to set it up inside of Oxygen. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do is um, actually, instead of having the Gravity Form shortcode here in the WordPress content editor, I'm just gonna update the page so that there's nothing in there, and then I'm gonna click on Edit with Oxygen. For those of you not familiar with the Oxygen Editor, this is what it looks like when you're actually designing the content of a page. What I've done is create a template with a basic header and footer, and then also added the inner content element. So what I'm gonna do here is click on Add and choose Section. And then what I'll do is go down to WordPress, click on Short Code, and just about every time what I do is go ahead in the Short Code Advanced Options, click on Size and Spacing, and set the width to 100%. That way you don't cause yourself any spacing complications. Go back to primary over here and the gravity form short code is really easy to write. It's just gravity forms, the ID of the form, which in my case is just one because there's no other form on this site. The three other options you have are title, it's either true or false, description, description is either true or false, and then Ajax is true or false. And pretty much always I do title, false, description, false, Ajax, true. And as you can see, it went ahead and rendered the form in Oxygen for us. You don't actually have to have it render if you don't want to, but you can kind of see it here. Um, and that looks more like what it does on the front end. So in order to take that, that CSS that I have written for you and get it inside of Oxygen, you basically have to go to Manage, click on Style Sheets, hit the button that says Add Style Sheets and just name this whatever you want. Most of the time I just call mine my custom CSS. And then here what you can do is just copy and paste all of this right in here. 
and just pop it right into this my custom CSS sheet. And as you can see, now on in the actual oxygen editor, and once we save it, we can go view it on the front end, our form looks a heck of a lot nicer just simply by copying and pasting that CSS. So this basically covers every use case that you would need. You got that nice message box transition there, which of course you can disable. There's a decent little hover effect on the button. And if you go and look at the actual um, styling in the the style sheet here, pretty much everything is self-explanatory. So you can change the paddings and the fonts, and you know, I just have the font set to inherit, but you can change padding, font weights, anything that you want, you can change the message box transition right here from you know three milliseconds to whatever you want it to be, uh, or get rid of that transition as a whole. There's all the options that you would need in here, and I've kind of compiled over time more and more stuff on this. So if you have a form with multiple pages, you have the next button instead of submit, um, that's all covered for you here, the next button hover. So again, really everything that you would need to have a standard contact form is ready for you right out of the box. So that's a really easy way to style your gravity forms. And again, you can get to all these links in the description below. Now what we're going to do though is I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick to style your gravity forms without having to actually write the CSS and you can use your familiar oxygen tools here to actually style the form. So what I'm going to do is actually delete my style sheet. I'm going to click save. And then let's go back to our oxygen settings and the WordPress admin panel and make sure that enable selector detector is checked. Click on save. And then let's go back to our editor here and reload the page. So again, we're back to what our form looked like at the beginning. It doesn't look all that great. Uh, but what you can see now is when you click on the actual shortcode element, there's a new button down here in the lower left that says style output. If you click on that style output button, what you can see is there's this little green box that starts to appear over the different elements on the page. I'm going to go ahead and click on this right here. And you can see what that does is it selects field one, one, which is in this particular case, it's on form one, which is the first field of this form. So that's where that naming comes from. But if you click on, you know, elements higher up, you can start to decide, okay, I want 25 pixels of padding on the actual form body. And you can see that all of the changes you make in the oxygen editor apply in real time. What you'll notice is that it is a little bit clunky to kind of select multiple selectors if you accidentally click on the wrong one. Most of the time what I do is just click off the little short code, click it again, and then choose style output and kind of find what I was roughly after. So let's go to just kind of a standard input field here and you can see if I click on just that input, it's going to target every input across my entire site because of the way that selector detector works. So if I choose this, uh, let's say G form body input, then it's going to apply to all, all, um, fields that are labeled input, which in this case is going to be our name, phone, and email fields. From here, what you could do is add, you know, 25 pixels of padding. You could add 25 pixels of margin. You could set the height to 25 pixels, or you could set it to, you know, 125, whatever you want to do. You can see how all of your changes are applying in real time. Something that might be actually more like what you would do would be to set a border of maybe like a light gray and then set the border radius to like 15 or something. You could also have the background color on hover of the, the form be something like, I don't know, uh, like a soft kind of, oh, that's not what I meant, F667FB, something like that. And then if you set it back to original, go advanced, effects, um, let's go to box shadow, we'll go something like this, set the opacity to more like 35%, and then go 0, 4, 10, negative 5 something like that. So what's going to happen is on hover, you have that nice transition there. And actually that, that one doesn't look all that great um, because of how quickly the transition happens. It's basically set to go instantly. So if I click back on this um, selector here, let me go back to effects. Let's choose transition and go 0 0.1 seconds, go ease and out. And now you can see the background color changes on hover. So of course you can sit here and play with this for hours. There's a ton of different things that you can do, but as you can tell, there's a function built right into oxygen. If you're not familiar or comfortable with CSS, the selector detector function will let you um, style pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be gravity forms. It can be anything with a short code or, or, you know, any element on your page. It's a really cool tool, especially if you can't figure out what the CSS selector is for, where, for whatever reason, if you're trying to manually write it, oftentimes I can find it with selector detector, which is cool. So if I go ahead and save this. Now, after you've seen me kind of mess with this, this is our form that I wrote earlier uh, using our pre-built CSS. And then if I refresh this, 
you can see it looks how we intended for it to earlier. Obviously, we'd need to make some adjustments here to that blue border, um, the, the kind of hover border there, which doesn't look all that great, but you get the idea. You can kind of mess with all of the individual elements on the page without having to write any CSS at all, which is great. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you guys. Again, my name is Permislog and my real name is Jonathan. Thank you so much for watching this video and please don't hesitate to ask for future videos. I'm always open to other content suggestions and I will look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Thanks so much.